go catch our breath and stuff. It seems like every week, right before we do this live stream, we end up having to chase animals for some reason. Yeah, they just decide so, to go out exploring every every Friday morning. Yeah, yeah. or the animals are just side, they'll just start causing trouble. Yeah, start eating the tree they're not supposed to eat. Because like what we do is we let our goats and our sheep and a lot of other those are the main ones. Our landscaping our crew. Yeah. So the grass and the leaves, I mean the bushes, it's all getting. We're on five acres and it gets chaos around here if we let it go. So that's why we originally got these animals. So our landscaping crew has been hard at work, but. They're pretty much out of food now, and now they're starting to turn to the stuff that we're trying to make them not eat. So we had to go yeah. herd them all this morning and get them out into their area. And... <sighs> so how y'all doing? <laughs> Welcome to another Friday, Memorial Day Friday. Yeah. Big weekend. It is. Hope you're able to enjoy your weekend. Hope you have good weather where you are. It's supposed to be really nice here. Yep. I'm really excited. It was. It's been raining like the entire week. So I'm really happy now that uh, <laughs> that we have sun <laughs> and nice weather coming in. Yep. And normally we'd be out on the lake on a weekend like this, but our boat's in the shop. So it's all right. We're going to find something else to do with the nice weather. We're going to spend some time in the garden today. Mm -hmm. uh, talked about maybe going to the Lion King show downtown tonight. So um, so welcome to another Friday edition. We are going to do some some new stuff this week. So we're still going to be answering your gardening questions, but we have some exciting stuff that we want to show all of you. So we've been working, the entire team has been working really hard on some new features. Uh, one of the features I think you're going to be very excited about in particular because it's been our most popular request. So we wanted to kick off this live stream by showing some of what we've been working on. And, um, and then we'll let some of the questions gather in about gardening questions you all have and whatnot. But hopefully some of these features are going to... Uh, Maybe some of them will answer some of their questions. We'll see. <laughs> so let me share my screen here and let's get started. And by first, I want to show y'all what has been our most common request, which is custom plants. So shout out to Patrick um, for building this. He built pretty much all of this on his own. And I think it is pretty, I think it's pretty awesome. So you'll see this new button here for add custom plant. Whenever you click on that, now this is going to bring up this window here and now you can add whatever plant you want so one of our most popular requests has been for borage uh we'll race y'all i think we'll have it in there before i will are have i will have a lot of these in yeah carries on a mission so we'll see but you can do that and then you take a picture um we'll be the borage <laughs> for now did it work okay it worked i don't know how it's going to handle that while we were live streaming so hopefully the live stream still works yeah um you can add a picture of it you can choose the different things about it i don't know enough about borage I, I is that a perennial i don't I, know I, I don't i haven't researched it yet and okay. we've never grown it so should have chose one that we knew better but yeah. the point is is y'all can go in and choose all the stuff that we choose for the most part whenever we create an app and now you can keep track of your own plants so you can also enter the and dates i think the biggest thing too to mention here is you can get a lot of this information off the back of the seed packet or if you don't know it, you don't have to even put it down. Yeah. You can leave any of these fields blank and just hit add and it'll put it in there still. The only field that's required is name. Yeah. We did that on purpose because I knew that someone out there was going to be like, I just want to plant my whatever. And I don't know any of the yeah, other or, stuff. I just or like it's a plant that they've had for four years and they don't have the seed packet and they don't know, you know. Yeah. That's that's how I would be probably be like, oh, I don't remember all of this stuff. The cool thing is, is if you do enter all of this stuff, like days to germinate, maybe it's three to ten. Again, I don't know. If you know borage, please don't judge me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying borage right. I don't know anything about borage. We've got to binge borage info now. Yeah, really but all these calculations will come into play. So all of the harvest estimations and the days to sprout estimations, and all that kind of stuff will work for this for your own plants. So... We are very excited to to get this out to y'all. Let um, me add it in so you can see this is the one we just added. Um, I should have entered a short description. So Patrick put a little text there, you know, <laughs> encouraging you to do that. Same with all these other ones where the fields will show. And look at there, Days of Sprout showing. Yeah, we did. So we are very excited about this custom plant feature. Um, it should be rolling out in the month of June. I feel pretty confident about that. We're working out some of the last minute little bugs and just little things you know it's just when you get to the end of a software project like this there's always the last 10 percent always seems to be the hardest so we're working through some of the complexities about how we're going to handle header images and 
all sorts of stuff like that. But and they're gonna put it on my phone <clears> soon, <throat> and I'll be going through and testing it and all that. We're almost at that point where we give it to Carrie, and then yeah. we kind of just wait because Carrie is an expert bug finder <laughs> in the garden and in the app. <laughs> Uh, she breaks our heart sometimes, but it's good because she catches the bugs from getting to y'all. So thank Carrie for helping y'all have a bug-free app experience. Speaking of a bug-free app experience, we we had the video go out this week about the Android update. Um, there, so let me talk a bit about this. So there was a Google update in January that made a change to how apps like ours work and a lot of other apps. And we've been working with... Other development teams, and shout out to Ionic, uh, a big, uh, the framework that we use for our app, the, the team there has been helpful in helping it. Uh, long story short, Google has been working on that bug this week, and we've seen activity, and they put out a nightly release last night that actually made a big improvement. So I think we're on the cusp of a fix being available, um, which is very exciting, because it's a very frustrating issue for the 3% of Android users out there that are affected by this. It basically made the app just crawl to where it just hardly even worked. Um, and it was dependent on a lot of things like antivirus and accessibility features and stuff like that. But the long story short is that Google has a fix that they're working on. We're very excited to see progress on that. And we'll continue to update you on that. But um, that was a big win this week. So... We got some more stuff we're going to show you too. We're just kind of scratching the surface. We've been done doing a lot of stuff. So um, the custom plants is what I showed you all so far. Now I want to show you all a uh, kind of a, a, a refresh on how the app is going to look. So this will be coming out before custom plants. I think I, my, I was trying to get this out this week, but we ran into some last minute complications. Um, but you can see that we redesigned how the plants list looks now. So you can see more at a time. One of our goals was to make it to where you could see more plants without having to scroll as much. I think before it was three or four. Now it's, you know, look how many you can see now. Um, we feel like this looks visually better too. I think it think adds a, yeah, it adds a nice feel when you're using the app. It still has the same features. You can still favorite plants here. You can still add a plant to your garden with this button here. Um, when you tap on the plant, then it takes you into the plant details. Again, we've tried to eliminate some space here in between to just make it to where you don't have to scroll as much. You can see more information immediately. Uh, some of these buttons up here in the header now, saving some space. Oh, that isn't working. I got to fix that. This is very fresh development. This is straight off of our development. Yeah, machines. I think so. we just, was it last night or the night before where we went through and did all this? It was, yeah, it, that it, was our date night. We yeah. went to our, our favorite burger beer place and worked on building out this UI and uh, we re refreshed all the images we, we went in and uh, we wanted to add some fresh images and stuff so it was fun it was like our art class that's what, <laughs> kind of what it felt like but um also shout out to patrick for building this filter uh modal so now before we had a series of filters there were health benefits at the top down below there was another set of filters we've moved all of them down into one filter screen so when you open this filter now you can apply multiple filters before you could only have one filter so now you can see uh, you want to see all the things that are good for anemia that can be harvested within 60 days. Now you apply filters, and now this shows you. So uh, very excited about this new filter screen. I think it's going to um, add a lot of value into the app. I think it's being able to filter multiple things is huge. And I think it's just going to help expose some of these filters that we have. Because before, it was just like this giant menu of like filters. Mm -hmm. And I think visually, we'll be able to do some cool stuff. We're going to Think about like, other filters and add in here. Maybe we can do like the most popular plants from the past 10 days. Or if you guys have you. suggestions of ones that you Yeah, what filters see. do y'all want us to add in here? We want to we want to do things cool. Like, you know, I think we, like, you know, like I mentioned, like the, uh, the most popular plants planted around you in the past month. That's a super useful filter we could add. Things like that. So if y'all have ideas for that, send them over. Um, post them in the back here. Yeah. Commander will post them up for us yeah. to look at. So I showed you all some stuff. What do you all think? Let me come back over here where I can see the chat and everything and stop sharing my screen. What do you all think about the changes that we just showed? Um, before we go into answering any, any garden questions, I just want to see, is there any feedback that came in about awesome feature? Awesome. All right. So we're very excited about this. Um, very excited to get it out to you all. And um, great. Thank you. All right, well, let's jump in. Let's answer some uh, some gardening questions. 
Mushrooms are generally not too bad for the garden. Uh, the mushrooms are helping to break down things. So they're probably growing on things like wood chips or um, shredded leaves or something like that. So traditionally, like usually we just leave our mushrooms. They're fine. Now they can be indicative of overwatering or if you just had a lot of rain, like usually mushrooms just kind of reveal a problem because uh, most of the time we don't have mushrooms in our garden because it's not wet enough. But, you know, like it's been raining a lot here this week. We're going to have a lot of mushrooms. We're probably going to have some come up, I'm There's sure. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, so we don't easily worry about mushrooms. They haven't caused a problem for us. Yeah. Um, you can move plants um, this time of year, depending on where you are with the, about to heat up. It, it can be rough on them. Um, you know, we have, we've had square foot gardening beds in the past where they were on like a like, solid platform where they were on like mm -hmm. legs that we can move and things like that. But without knowing the exactly what plants they are, sometimes it can be tough to transplant them once they're, once they're established. I don't think so. It shouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't think that mint would do anything to deter birds. Birds are, <laughs> yeah, they won't care. Yeah. They're not going to care about that. The The mint works really well to deter other things, especially rodents. Cause like mice are heavily dependent upon their sense of smell to find food. And mint is so overwhelming of a smell that it just makes it where they, it overwhelms their senses. Yeah. So that's why rodents don't like mint and squirrels, Squirrels, rodents. Yeah, they're probably the same same way too. Then we haven't done mint for squirrels, but we've never had a squirrel problem. Yeah, but I don't it has know why? Because mice. we have lots of squirrels around. They just... lots of cats, lots of dogs. Well, but I see squirrels everywhere in our yard, just not in the garden. Hmm. I don't know. We're lucky, I guess. <laughs> so you do not want to fertilize right when you transplant. Um, the reason being is that the act of fertilizing can shock a plant if you will sometimes so what we like to do is wait until the plant has established itself a little bit after transplanting so usually that's a week or two uh, depending on weather conditions if you transplant it and you've got perfect weather for a week it may be established after that if it went through some stress then it may be a little bit longer i'm just going off that how, how that plant looks after a week basically i'm waiting for it to put out new growth after a transplant so i'm looking for two three new leaves after transplanting and then that's when we're looking to fertilize i know for our tomatoes especially like whenever mm -hmm. we planted them out like the back of the espoma fertilizer that we use says to wait like a week and a half to two weeks and then do it every two weeks yep. so i just remember every two weeks i just always go out there with it yeah hey i forgot a feature that we were going to show i just realized we got another new feature to show you all do? yeah let's answer this question okay. and then i just realized um, so we do not recommend, recommend any pesticides that are not organic. Um, there's an, an Espoma organic spray. It's not really a pesticide though. in the, in the, in the typical sense of the word, um, we found we don't need to use pesticides in the garden that if we employ organic methods and we use companion planting and beneficial insects, then we don't have to use them. And the problem that we've, uh, that I feel like with using pesticides is now you are in control of the bug universe in your garden because you killed all the good bugs and the bad bugs. So now you've got to keep spraying pesticide to keep that under control. Who knows what the pesticides are doing to our food? I think that's why a lot of us end up where we are with trying to grow our own food anyway. So when we first started out, we felt like, well, let's try these organic methods. If we get overwhelmed with bugs and we can't handle it, then maybe we'll fall back. But we never fell back. And we just encourage beneficial insects we have a lot of companion planting we do things like neem oil if the temperature is below 90 mm -hmm. and like if it's a caterpillar issue things like btk and all of these recommendations are all in in the app it's under the pest section so if you go into the pest section and go to whichever critter that you're having issues with it'll show you um like the different organic remedies that we've seen that have worked here it is. There so for each pest, if you tap on it, it will show you all the different ways that you can handle it organically. So that's our recommendation for, for pests. And while we're in here, let me show the other thing I was talking about. So, oh, I gave it away. Darn. Pretend y'all didn't see that. Okay. 
All right, so in Garden Plus, this is the way it's looked since we released it. We have all of your plants here. You can see the problem here. If you really like acorn squash and you planted a lot of it, or if you're doing a like lot of testing, yes, then it gets overwhelming. And in, in a garden of our size, this was too much to manage. Um, and we had to make it to where we could use our own app with the size of garden we had. And that's why we built this new group by plant feature. So now you're going to be able to filter or view your plants grouped together. So at a glance, you can scroll through and see, and we're still working on the styling on this. It's not going to have this eight in parentheses. It's going to have an eight, like looking over this image that looks nice. We're still working on the details of it, but you're going to be able to group your plants and then tap on it. And now here's all my acorn squash. And from here, maybe you want to filter by location. We'll add that in there where you can filter by which garden it's in, um, things like that. So just make it easier to manage really large gardens. Yeah, I love that. I can't believe we excited. forgot to show that feature. I know. We just I'm got super so much excited. to show. I know. Okay. It's exciting. All right. Let's go back to y'all's questions again. If I can find the screen. One moment. I got to find. I got a lot of screens up. <laughs> We're back. I found it. Okay. <laughs> All right, Andrew. What's our next question? Yeah, pumpkin will definitely do that. It yeah. vines and vines. Um, you can try transplanting the whole thing. If you're going to do it, get the biggest shovel you have, make the biggest hole you can lift. And what I'm trying to say is you're just going to just dig that entire area up and try and transplant the whole area to where the roots never even really know they moved. But in the process of moving it, the vine is not going to like being moved. I mean, our winter squash vines get mad at me if I just move them from one corner to the other, they'll start wilting over and like fussing at me. So can, um, can you try putting a, uh, a, a trellis in? Is it too late to try and trellis? Unless it's a huge, like if it's a smaller pumpkin at least, cause you can, maybe you can still have some of the, like the cucumbers and the, in the watermelons tend to be a little more forgiving on that, but those winter squashes, the, the vine stems just do not like being messed with a lot once they're established. They break on me all the time, and I get frustrated with them all the time. It's not like beans or cucumbers where it seems like you, those vines are a little more pliable when they're older. Yeah. You can, like, move them around and stuff. The winter squash, I've just learned that, all right, if it, I just got to step over it and stuff. But We usually, well, we try to put them in, like, the corner of a square foot gardening bed so that way it can go off the side and in the walkway. I know that's not super great either, but yeah. at least you're not taking over your growing space. Yeah. And it's, and I will say too, that it's, you still have time to plant more pumpkin. So just plant another one, in another spot. It'll catch up before you know it. They will grow so fast right now. Pumpkin planted right now, anywhere in the Midwest where it's warm. Um, I, I, I'm guessing where it's warm. I mean, just say anywhere where it's warm. I don't know enough about weather in other parts of the state or the country, but it's Oklahoma. Oh, it's Patrick. Yeah. Okay. Patrick, pa just paint more pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be good. You get to feeling better. Uh, oh, no. Things. Karen, can you follow up with where you live and what the weather has been like the past month? So what I, what I, the reason why I'm asking is we've had some people email. What I've seen that's been common is there's a cold front that came through pretty late. And things like spaghetti squash, uh, pumpkins, peppers, tomatoes that were left out during that cold front struggled. Um, I saw someone even down as far south as Dallas had issues with a cold front that came through and had peppers that were stunted. That may be what's going on because like spaghetti squash in particular does not like to get cold. Boston. Okay. Um I'm guessing it's been cold up there. I, I've never been to Boston, but I hear I it's have, cold. I have You've been to Boston? In Boston. Yeah. We need to go. It's one of the places we've talked about going. I imagine it's been cold. So if it has been, then that would be the reason why the spaghetti squash is struggling because it does like uh, the warmer temperatures. So try another round of it. You still have plenty of time. Yeah. Okay, so the main reasons for tomatoes not fruiting yet are, well, one, they're just not old enough. Um, yeah, a lot of ours haven't. I mean, we have a few that have already flower, or flowered, but not, not every one. So that can be one reason. Um, if you look at the back of the seed packet, usually it'll have days to, uh, days to maturity. 
and that will tell you how many days it'll take before um, before it'll give you fruit. Um, another reason, though, is too much nitrogen. So if a tomato plant gets uh, too much nitrogen, uh, it's fine if it gets a lot of nitrogen early on, but if it continues to get nitrogen during the, the flowering phase, that can make the plant think that it needs to uh, keep growing greens and not produce flowers. So if you're using an all-purpose fertilizer or a fertilizer that's heavy in nitrogen, back off from the nitrogen. Um, that's one of the reasons why we recommend the Espoma tomato fertilizer because it's formulated for tomatoes to help with this. And you can win the, the fertilizer. Like I did a good job, didn't I? Yeah. Um, uh, by commenting on any of our YouTube videos for the month. So we have a monthly contest on YouTube. Uh, and it's sure wrapping up this is the last weekend. Yeah, make sure you're subscribed to our channel and comment on any of our videos that we've had. And you'll be entered to win. Yep. That's all have, it takes. Oh, a couple more days left. And I'll be announcing the winner on the first. Yep. Next month, we're going to have another exciting tomato contest. Two of them. Yeah. Yeah. We'll give more details later. <laughs> <laughs> Major Lots problem with insects. insects. Yep. This is the time of year. So... It depends on the plants. I mean, it depends on the insects that you're dealing with. Um, and again, I'll mention the pests uh, section of the app because it was built to to help with um, with knowing what to do for all the different insects. But I can tell you that there's a pretty general strategy we use for all of them. So for a lot of insects, it's the yellow sticky traps. And let me share my screen again, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You have a picture have, on our Instagram. I should I have a picture on our Instagram. Yeah. So on our Instagram, we've been posting a lot of stuff lately. And here is one showing. Oh, it wants me to log in. Okay. Well, y'all can see this. I'll just like zoom in. There we go. Ha ha, Instagram. <laughs> so there's a yellow sticky trap back here. And you can see a bunch of pests that are on the back of it. So it's getting it's getting flies, which aren't really plant pests. But it's getting a lot of... Um, Leaf hoppers. Yeah. Cucumber beetles, um, yeah, lots of insects, insect pests. So that is one of the big things that you can do to help with pests. If it is a caterpillar pest, then there is the stuff called um, BTK caterpillar killer. That is a naturally occurring soil bacteria that kills caterpillars. So you can um, you can spray that on your plants, and that will help with caterpillars. There's also insect netting that you can put over your plants. And we have a YouTube video that shows how we build uh, domes to go over a garden out of PVC pipe. And um, those are those are really helpful. And the insect netting works great. Mm -hmm. So if you have a smaller garden, that would be a great option to go with. If you have a bunch of gardens, then it may not be, it's going to yeah, be a lot of work to build all those insect nettings. So it kind of depends on what you're dealing with. You also don't have to build a dome for it. You can just lay the insect netting over the plants too. Um, that'll work as well. Uh, diatomaceous earth is another thing that we use a lot for pests. And then, you know, one of the biggest thing for pests is companion planting. Don't put all of your tomatoes in the same place together. Um, scatter them around your garden. That way it's harder for the tomato hornworm to find it. And use herbs and things like that to scatter around. Uh, between your plants to make it harder for the pests to find what they're looking for because they use their smell to find the, what they're looking for. So, and then uh, when you see spiders, don't kill them, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, call them a friend because they help you out. So especially the orb weavers. Yeah. Those are, I nice feed ladies. them whenever I haven't seen any yet this year though. Yeah, I know. Hmm. To me chickens. <sighs> yeah. But the chickens do a great job too. Insect yeah. management. <laughs> I always promote chickens. I love our chickens. Oh no. <laughs> um there is an app called Plant Snap that does a pretty good job identifying plants, but sometimes it'll tell you about 10 different plants and you got to figure out which one it is. Um if they're all vegetable plants, uh I'll do you a solid. Just send me some pictures. I'll tell you what each of them is. Um, just email me, dell at seedtospoon.net. Hopefully one day we can have a feature that's better than just email me and I'll tell you. <laughs> but for now, that's what we got. Um, but that'd be a cool feature to be able to build. The problem with it is just very difficult because there's millions of plants out there. So uh, if we did it focused on just specific foods, I think it would probably be not too bad. But um, 
Here's my email address. You can email me pictures of the plants you're not sure about, and I'll help you out figuring out what's what. I say go for it. Yeah. I mean, you're on the edge of it being too hot, but you can help them out. Um, if you get a really hot streak coming up in the next few weeks, you can give them some shade in the afternoon. I mean, they're going to like that anyway. So what we like to do, a really simple way to do this is to um, put two T-posts in the ground on the west side of the plant and then put shade cloth between the two T-posts so it creates a shade wall. You can also, like, uh, instead of doing the shade the shade cloth, you can put, like, hardware remesh, and then you can grow beans off that panel. So you have, like, a, a living shade wall. Those are great ways to create shade. So for all the plants you just mentioned, I would still take a shot on it. I wouldn't expect to have any tomatoes or probably peppers until after it cools back down more towards the fall. Um, but you'll still get some in the fall, probably. Yeah, water them really well for the first week or two uh, and then back off. Probably that first week especially and then start to back off. Um, I think I saw that you're growing in grow bags too. Um, if that's the case, you can help them out by putting them in kiddie pools during the day when it gets really hot and fill the kiddie pool with like an inch or two of water. So that, that would help out too. <laughs> uh, grasshoppers, grasshoppers. oh my gosh yeah there's really not a great treatment for i'm gonna advocate chickens again because <laughs> yeah. honestly that's what the first year that we were here that we were gardening we dealt oh my gosh there were so many grasshoppers everywhere and then we started getting chickens and seriously the chickens just they paroled the fence line and they they took out the grasshoppers yeah, we have an electric fence around our garden, so we have basically a moat of chickens around our garden. So yeah. I know that's not feasible for everybody. <laughs> Grasshoppers are tough, though. There's really not a treatment other than... We trained our spiders at our old house. <laughs> trained them. We trained them. <laughs> we fed our spiders. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we would we would catch the grasshoppers and throw we would put, the throw them into the orb weaver. It was fun. It was fun. And then they would wrap them all up. Yeah, yeah we got cool video from it. Yeah. I would just sit there with my can and just film spiders for half the day. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're dorks. We're, grasshoppers are not fun. Fire ants. Okay, normally I'd tell you not to worry about ants, but fire ants are a different story. So uh, we've had success. Um, we've had some ants in the past I've need to move. You're never going to get rid of the fire ants, but you're, you can move them. Um, so you can encourage them to move by pour, <laughs> encouraging them. That's a funny way to put that. By boiling hot water. And pouring it on their mound, that will definitely encourage them to move. We do those like giant vats of like those big spaghetti dishes, you know, like the big crock pot. What are they called? Stock pots. Yeah. Stock pot. Yeah. Stock pot. Biggest one we have, like my grandma's old stock pot, the giant ones. Fill that with water, boil it, dump that on there. That works. Um, we've done some of like we've tried some of the borax things and stuff like that but i'm always too worried about our other animals getting into mm -hmm. it and stuff so the boiling water worked well yeah and you may just have to do that a few times just keep doing it until they eventually go somewhere where they're not causing a problem uh diatomaceous earth may work a little bit for that yeah, too we've got, a, we've got a bunch of tips too in the in the app under the pest section for ants Bit of a diabolical option is if you have two ant piles, you can scoop up one and dump it on the other, and they'll go to war with each other. Yeah, then the cinnamon, cayenne pepper, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Okay. Banana water. <laughs> <laughs> we need it. We need Laura back for discussing banana water. The banana water came up again. Yeah. Oh, we've had banana water before. Yeah. Um, yeah, because Laura had done banana water before. Did she say if it helped? Yeah, she she likes using it yeah. for her plants. Yeah. Okay. We haven't tried banana water yet. So the question is about um, whether or not banana water works for watering plants. The idea behind this is that if you soak bananas in water, then some of the potassium will leach out of the banana peels and into the water. So... Similar idea to using worm castings or something like that uh, would totally work. I, th I think um, that's probably more work than I'm ever going to want to do with my garden because I'm a very lazy gardener. 
I would rather just give it plenty of potassium and phosphorus with my Espoma fertilizer up front and with compost. Um, but we, in the past, we've done stuff like that. We've done the worm teas. We've done all that kind of stuff. It totally works, but just straight up compost and fertilizer also works. So if you want to have fun with it and do this kind of stuff, like totally do it. Yep. You're not doing, you're not wasting your time. That's helping, but you also don't have to do this if you just do fertilizer and compost. So. Mint deter good bugs. Probably I have, not. I haven't seen that happen before. I wouldn't least. think so. Now, one thing to be careful with mint is it will overwhelm your other plants. So make sure if you plant it, put it in a container around your plants. Don't put it in like your raised bed or it'll take over the whole thing. Yeah, because I'm, I'm using a lot of mint this year, especially as companion planting <laughs> around our squashes, especially because I'm worried about squash bugs. And they so far have been good, but I have put them into their own little like three gallon smart pots and place them up right next to the squash plant. So that way they're helping to deter the bad bugs. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. First of all. Um, yeah, I completely understand. That's why we didn't, uh, we didn't want to use a lot of chemicals or pesticides or anything like that. Cause we always worry about our animals also. So we always try and use, all the organic methods that we can. So planted 80 strawberry roots and none of them came up. Um, added a mix of good soil and tried a no dig method. Um, if I were planting a bunch of bare root strawberries, I would plant them in something like a biodome or something like that with more of a controlled atmosphere. Um, and then I would move them out because it's just, just going to be harsher conditions trying to do it outside. So that's how I would do something like that. Uh, if you're buying transplants of strawberries from the store that's or from the nursery, that's fine to, to transplant them directly outside. But if I were doing bare root strawberries, um, I would do them inside of some sort of a either a biodome like we sell through the app or just, you know, one of these other seed starting type trays. But the point is, is doing it in a controlled environment indoors. That's how I would be doing strawberries bare root. Maybe if someone else has had success doing bare root strawberries outside, they could chime in. I think if you're going to do it outside, the keys are going to be, well, in the name, the strawberries, mulch, nice. you know, you straw or, uh, I don't like straw because a lot of times straw has weed seeds in it. I like to do um, shredded leaves instead. Or pine shavings works well too. Like we have a lot of pine shavings that we use in our chicken and rabbit areas. So when those are uh, done with them, then they go into the garden because now they're fertilized. Yeah. So yeah, fertilized mulch. Super, Fancy. Super mulch. <laughs> <laughs> it should already be. Um, so if you've created a garden on your phone, then it should be on your tablet if you sign in with the same account. So all you have to do is sign in with the same account on both devices and the plants should sync up. Um, what may be going on is you may have two different accounts. You may have one account on your phone and a different one on a tablet with like maybe like a different email address. Um, if you email me, I can help you get those plants merged over or do whatever we need to do to get you onto one account. But um, they should just sync automatically because they're stored in our servers and then wherever you connect from, they show um yeah that's how that should work oh collards look like lace you know what what is it <laughs> <laughs> because so our cabbage looks like lace right now the and bugs? it's the harlequin bugs yeah 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 so if you see bugs that look on look like this on your plant let me go see i'm not sure if i have posted a picture on our instagram or not but they're yeah they're in the app right here yes those nasty things right there i found that that's exactly what our brassicas whenever they these harlequin bugs find them it's what our brassicas look like is lace exactly like it yep so that's probably what you're dealing with mm -hmm. um hand picking is the easiest way to handle them unfortunately yeah, yeah. there's really not a ton that can be done outside of hand picking um, preventing we've tried using some of the sprays 
the insect netting will work on that too. So that's one of those things that we will fall back to for insect netting if it gets too bad. But it's probably what's going on. Yeah. There, I mean, it's possible too that there's like a, a cabbage worm or something, something like that. Yeah. Um, but I'm guessing it's the harlequin. Bugs. The lacing part tells me the harlequin. That, the cabbage, that's my guess. Because like the cabbage worms will eat the whole thing. It'll just be like a big hole. I have never grown jackfruit. I don't know anything about it. I'm sorry. Maybe somebody can yeah, chime maybe in, in chat. And, yeah. and answer some questions about jackfruit for you. Yes. So let me show you. So right now, you can only filter one at a time. But in this new feature that we've been working on, I'm in the wrong... Uh, I'm showing you the wrong thing. One moment. I got to go to the other window. <laughs> See, I was. we have like two different branches of code going um, that we're working on. So I, I've got to show you all from two different places. And I choose, chose the wrong one. Okay, so in the new filter screen, you're going to be able to filter by both. So you can do, he said, favorites and can be planted. I don't think I have anything in favorites that can be planted right now. So it's not yeah. going to show anything. Um, but... If I did, let me just do a can be planted today. Okay. And now I'll do a favorites. Now there we right go. There. So that was the main reason why we originally moved the filter to be its own screen like that, so that you could have more than one filter at a time, because that has been a popular request and one thing that we wanted to do too like just when we're using the app it's yeah like, man, i wish i could see all my favorites that are can be planted now so that was one of the reasons why we did that and i also think visually it's going to look better too so it clears up more space in the plants list too so you can see more plants at a time oh broccoli bolted yeah unfortunately that happens so, so summer crops in a three gallon pot. So I would think things that don't like a ton of water. So my mind goes to some of the Mediterranean herbs, but not something that's going to get big like sage or rosemary. So thyme, marjoram, oregano. I think you could do all of those in a three gallon smart pot and get away with it. Um, as far as fruits or vegetables go. You might be able to get away with one of those, like potapino is a variety of like tiny jalapeno. But there, there's like smaller versions of like eggplant, like potted eggplants too. Mm -hmm. that I know that part you're going to have to baby it and you're going to have to make sure you don't miss watering. That's why the, like, I mean, I've grown tomatoes in a one gallon smart pot before. Uh, we grew a, a mammoth 12 foot tall sunflower in a one <laughs> gallon right. smart pot once yeah. accidentally. It just sprouted in there i was like oh, let's try it and it did great so um but you got to really keep up with watering it because mm -hmm. it does there's not a lot of room for error because you don't have all the extra soil so that's why we recommend like five gallon seven gallon things like that this makes tomatoes. it easier but, more room for air but um that's, that may have been partly why the broccoli bolted too if it was in a three gallon because again it's not as much room for moisture to be retained and for cooler temperatures to be retained it's more affected by the by the swings in temperature so <clears throat> hopefully that helps and good luck gardening welcome to what do we say welcome to gardening i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um beefsteak tomatoes very popular tomato we haven't grown a lot of them but i am pretty familiar with them um very few leaves very tall but very very few leaves interesting I wouldn't think that too much nitrogen would mean lack of leaves. Usually too much nitrogen means too much leaves and too much vine. Mm -hmm. um, so could it be not enough? Lack of light is the first thing that comes to mind because we've had tomatoes that are, are volunteer tomatoes that came up on their own in a patch of lettuce. And we don't know that they're there until they're like three feet tall, but the first three feet have no leaves because there, there wasn't enough light. So that's what my first thought is, is maybe they're not getting enough light. Searching. They're searching for light and they're not producing a bunch of leaves until they find the light. That's yeah. first thing that comes to mind because that just doesn't make sense. I, I mean, 
no flowers makes sense, no fruit makes sense, but no leaves doesn't necessarily make sense unless it's that. So maybe someone in the chat has a, another idea, but first thing that comes to mind is that. Zone three, square foot gardening, <clears throat> tomato plants. Okay, zone three. So we are zone seven. That's quite a bit different yeah. from us. So I don't know if I can really give you great advice for zone three because I haven't done it myself. Um, what I can tell you is we built our app to work no matter where you are. So if you use our app, it will calculate your planting dates for you based on your nearest weather station. Um, so zone three is going to be a shorter season. I would recommend going with a faster growing tomato if you want to grow tomatoes. So if you go into our app and you go into the types tab, let me show this again. I'll get faster on the draw here being able to show it. So we'll look for tomatoes. And they're here. So you can sort by days to harvest. So I would take a look at some of these tomatoes that are the fastest because you're going to have that shorter growing season. Um, there may also be varieties of tomatoes that do better in the north. I don't know. Maybe someone from the chat that lives up there could help us out. Um, I can tell you a channel that I would follow if I were you is One Yard Revolution. I don't know. I don't know if he makes videos as much anymore, but his older stuff is golden. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's I binged the entire channel when we started gardening. And he's up in Vermont, so I would I would find out what what varieties of tomatoes he's growing up there and key off of what he's doing. Elliot Coleman also wrote a lot of really good books. He's up in that area. He's from Maine. Um, a lot of his writings are really good about North tomatoes too. That's where I'd go. Sweet corn. It's been a bit since we grew corn. So three feet tall and already flowering, but no corn yet. I think it, I would have to know the specific variety and how many days to harvest it is. If you look at that packet of corn on the back of it, it should have a day's maturity. Um, this is one of the reasons why we built the Garden Plus section to help you keep track of this. So if you log the plant in Garden Plus and you put how many days it is in there, then it'll tell you when it's supposed to, when it's supposed to sprout. So... Um, and harvest and harvest too yeah. so because it is tricky sometimes to know like um especially for like watermelon because it'll look like it's ready to harvest for a while but it's really not um you have to wait for certain things so that's what i would do is just check this back of the seed packet and see if it's on pace corn is kind of all across the board for different timings so it's hard to know yes um we do ship to canada but there are some restrictions so i know espoma fertilizer is one of those things that I think there's U.S. regulations, but as long as we can do it within the law, we ship to Canada. So um, I know this because we have been building um, the ability to buy products directly within the app instead of having to go out to Park C to buy it. So uh, we built in Canadian support into there as well. I mean, that's part of what we've been working on. So that should be rolling out next week. So y'all will be able to buy things directly in the app without having to go out to another website and be able to build your cart and all that kind of stuff directly on the app too. I guess I should have shown that also, but yeah, I don't have that ready. We'll, to go. we'll see that. We'll show next that next week. Time. Next week we'll show that. Now we have a teaser. <laughs> oh, and thank you, Andrew, for popping that up. Yeah. If you uh, get, you can uh, shop and save fifteen percent on your entire order by using that spoon fifteen code that was just up there. Yep. So any of the products that we talk about, uh, they should pretty much all be in the store for the most part. Um, you can find them in our app and then you can um, get it from there. Um, so the inset netting, uh, they, they could crawl underneath if you had if you had a gap. So typically what we do is we build PVC domes that it sets over top. And these insects aren't that smart. I mean, they're not going to go find all. If you're just laying on the ground, that'll be enough too. People also use landscaping fabric staples to, to hold it down into the ground. That's a pain though, because then you got to go when you harvest, you got to pull them up and stuff. So that's why we prefer the PVC domes because I can just lift the whole dome off and then put it back on. We've also built them on hinges in the past. So we can hinge it to, we just use door hinges, literally, is all we do to, to build that. Uh, just two by fours and PVC pipe. And um, so that's how, that's how it helps with it.
So how many peppers in a five gallon pot? I would just do one. Yeah. Um, if you want to maximize your space and have more things in there, then you could add something like thyme or, or basil. Yeah, like some of the smaller varieties of basil that, or and put it on the, and like strategically place it so it's on the north side of the smart pot so it's not shading the pepper. Um, Marigold. But I would only do friends. one pepper per five or, gallon. Smart and pot. one tomato also. Unless you're doing like a dwarf variety of pepper and you're keeping it pruned, you could get away with two if you're in like a very small space and you really want to have a jalapeno and a bell pepper, then you could get away with it. But you'd have to do a lot of pruning and I'm a lazy gardener. I don't like to have to prune. <laughs> I want things to grow wild and grow the way they want to. So that's why we leave ours in a five gallon. And typically we're not putting anything else in there with it. We're putting another smart pot next to it that has basil or something in it. And that pepper has its own pot by itself. Um, some of these things are still. So arugula and radish that have bolted. Yeah. So are they still it's... edible? Um, yes. So the seed pods are oftentimes edible. It's um, not going to taste great. Oh, the radish seed pods are not too bad sometimes. It depends on the variety and it depends on the time of year. But like, you just don't like the flavor of that kind I of stuff. So I don't. I don't. And so it's, flavor. so it's me. Yeah. She hates arugula and anything spicy like that. But if you Mustard. like that taste, then a couple of arugula seeds or radish seeds can be a nice little crunch in a salad. I would say the biggest benefit, though, is the beneficials that are they will attract because um, arugula, radish, lettuce, the, all that that's bolted attracts so many beneficial insects. You'll see so many butterflies and things like that around. And things like cilantro that bolts and goes like mm -hmm. coriander seeds. And those, um, I like those. So the leaves probably aren't going to be good, but be paying attention for the seed pods and harvest them when they're young and green because once they get older, then they don't taste very good. And they're really not that edible. But when the seed pods are young, they are. So try that out. It was a it was a pretty cool experience the first time. Uh oh, our battery's about to die. I plug this in. It was a pretty cool experience the first time that we we did that, where we tried some of the seed pods. And it was a new realization about the food process. I'm gonna get a, a bit on a rant here, but the, uh, the the food system that we have now is built for mass producing a lot of food. And radish seed pods are not something that's mass produced, but these are one of those cool things that you just happen to find where you're gardening and it makes you think, it makes you wonder what other things you're missing out on. Because the nutrition contained within a radish seed pod is way higher than any other part of that radish plant because the, the put everything it had into making seeds and making them last. So there's a ton of nutrition in that and it's a great way to add stuff into your diet. So rant over. <laughs> I don't know what that is. You know what tool is? Tool? I don't. The I'm band tool. Sure. Maybe if you play tool music. Maybe. That's my joke. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good one? Wow. Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's the way to sprout Lufa. Lufa normally does really Lufa. well for us just planting it straight in the ground. Any type of squash like that, for us, once the temperatures are right, which right now they're really right, it will sprout nice here in our, our area real fast and just take off on its own. So just got to make sure the nighttime temperatures are above 55 and you're good to go. Maybe just don't plant too deep. Maybe that's one mistake you can make with Lufa. We've never grown rhubarb. Do you know enough about rhubarb to know if it bolts? Sounds like it's bolting. It, uh... I mean, this is one that I've I've researched a lot on rhubarb before, and I mean, it sounds like every other plant in the family mm -hmm. that would be bolting. So that 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 would be my guess too. Sorry, Wendy, we got to grow rhubarb. We let you we down. We do. We let Wendy down. We do need to grow rhubarb. It looks really pretty too. And you can make pie from it. I like, <laughs> I like pie. I don't. I don't think I've had a rhubarb pie though. No. I just know it's a thing. Tomato fruit not getting bigger. Plant seems to be growing well. So what some varieties of tomato, the fruit takes forever to get to maturity. That's the problem with some varieties of tomatoes is they make great big tomatoes, but it takes 20 or 30 days 
for it to make it once it once the fruit sets. And in Oklahoma, we just don't have the weather that's gonna we have either hell or it's bugs or whatever's going or the on. Birds, yeah, like to come into. So that could be what's going on. Uh, it could also be a lack of nutrients. So if if that is a possibility, uh, try the Espoma tomato fertilizer, and then probably not going to be nitrogen so i wouldn't think like a fish fertilizer would help in that case i would think this is trying to think of a quick release phosphorus potassium but i can't think of one on top of my head so just the tomato fertilizer the espoma one that's what i would do oh okay that but i forgot what she was asking it, what, what it was for now was it birds? If tool would work, oh, gotcha. If if tool would work to protect against snow, Andrew, help us out. Thank you. Insect Keeping netting replacement. Off. Yes. Thank you. Okay, I was trying to think of tool as like some sort of like. <laughs> Maybe if it's like a wide roll, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. No, tool okay. would be tool would be great because that's pretty much insect. Okay. Yeah, because cool. it's like this that big. You have to like stitch it together or something. Like, well, like no, that? you can you can buy it in like a big long. Just wrap it around. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great idea. I've never All thought right. about doing that. Well, before. let's try it so I can visualize it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the BTK should work. Um. We've never had a situation where BTK did not work for, for... So the problem that Jennifer's having is with cabbage white, the, the butterflies. They lay these little green caterpillars that each plants. They're very annoying. But BTK should work. Make sure you got the right spray. So BT spray is different than BTK. That's Those are different things. Um, so make sure that you're getting BTK caterpillar killer and try that. But it should work. Um, if, if it didn't work, then check your mixtures. Make sure you put enough on there. But we've never had a situation where it didn't work. It takes a couple rounds though, so if it, if like a heavy rain, it'll get it'll get uh, it'll get washed off, and then you won't then you have to reapply. So. Oh yeah, that's a good uh, good comment too about. Yeah. reapplying after rain mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. yeah well we're getting to the end of the hour yeah um if y'all have any other questions go ahead and throw them into the chat um let's give them a few more updates on what we're doing this week so we've had uh if you haven't checked out our youtube this week check out uh the video carrie made this week about tomato pests she did a, a great video talking about the different pests you're going to see when you grow tomatoes and how we handle them um, we're really excited to get these updates out to y'all. So next week, you should see some of these things starting to roll out. And then the custom plant uh, feature that I showed, uh, again, our goal is for June to have all of these rolling out as part of uh, a Garden Plus rollout. So we are very excited to finally get all of this off of our laptops and into your hands. Um, been a long time coming. A lot of hard work has gone into building all of this. So um We'd love to hear what y'all think about these new features. Um, if you're watching this in the future, uh, leave comments, uh, send us emails, letting us know what, what you think about these new features and um, what kind of new filters you want to see and things like that. Yeah, and don't forget too, this is the end of the month, so we are almost about to give away that tomato fertilizer. <laughs> so I will <laughs> announce the winner on the first of the month. All you need to do is just be subscribed here to our YouTube channel and comment on any of our videos that we have done throughout this month. Got another question from Joyce here. So let's talk about tomatoes and pruning. So let's cover a couple things related to this. So one, we only prune our indeterminate tomatoes. So those are our vining tomatoes that get really big that grow over our trellises. You can show a picture of it on our Instagram too. We yeah. Have, we'll uh, so right here in this picture, you can see Carrie is showing one of our indeterminate tomatoes. This middle sucker branch is where we are pruning on our indeterminates. And how many we prune really just depends on the trellis. So the trellis that, it's, that that tomato is on, we've determined that we want to grow probably about three stems of tomatoes on that trellis. So we're going to prune it down to only having three main stems. 
Um, our determinate tomatoes, we are not pruning at all because we want them to produce as many tomatoes as they possibly can. So hopefully that is a, uh, a quick summary about how to do that. Um, the comment about the strawberries. Oh, one second. Um, so um, I saw in the chat um, that other people have had a lot of success planting the bare roots directly in the ground, but that they buy them from the store and they're already dead. So that could be what's going on. And sometimes with these bare root plants, um, depending on where you're buying them, they can not, not make it by the time they get it to you. But um, my recommendation was to start them inside of some sort of biodome or some sort of indoor, indoor seed starting area. Um, you're going to have the most amount of control over just the different environmental variables and you're going to have more success with them. But it sounds like a number of people in chat said that they've just put them directly outside and that does fine for them. So, um, yeah. Andrew, what was the other question you had before? I kind of took over there. Sorry about that. So, uh, alert notifications are one of the things we are working on next. So that will be coming very soon, probably more in the July timeframe, uh, maybe at the end of June, but you will, we will be giving alerts for when planting windows are open, when it's time to fertilize, when it's time to harvest, when it's time to water, all that kind of stuff is what we're working on now. Um, that'll be the stuff that hopefully I'm showing a month from now on our live stream. But <laughs> the stuff I showed today is stuff that we've been working on for the past few months. And um, that, that's kind of stuff that we're working on now. So that will definitely all be coming. And if there are specific alerts that you want, um, like you mentioned, like feeding your plants, that'll definitely be one. But if there's other alerts that y'all would like to receive, um, you know, some of the ones we've talked about are ones I mentioned, but also weather alerts. So whenever it's going to be really cold, whether it's going to be really hot, whenever there's storms that are predicted, things like that or other alerts that we want to send. So um Working on that kind of stuff now. So really excited to be able to show you all about that soon. Looks like everybody else likes that idea too. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. We do not prune cucumbers. We've never pruned cucumbers. Um, I just let them go wild and they go wild. And we end up with more cucumbers than we could ever imagine eating. Yeah, but I'm excited because they'll be really good for the animals too. If we have extras. I love your I frozen cucumber drink where she takes cucumber slices and freezes them and puts them in a water container with some mint. It's like and ice. It's so <laughs> good in the summer because it's so refreshing when it's hot outside. That's my favorite drink you make. Mm -hmm. So a stunted seedling. Uh, the number one way to prevent this is to make sure that you harden off your plants. Um, we have a YouTube video from probably about a month ago now where Carrie does a really good job explaining how to harden off. But essentially, it's just slowly adapting your plants to the outside conditions. So that's the number one way to prevent it. If, um, if it's too late and it's a pepper plant, then it might be too late because a lot of times with peppers, if they get stunted, they, they don't recover. So we are pretty quick to replace plants that look like they're stunted. I'm not not ashamed to admit failure on a plant and start over. I think that's a big thing that we learned after yeah. our first year of gardening is we held on the plants too long and they never recovered. And I remember thinking, I wish I just would have replaced it. Um, cause it's, you know, a dollar 50 or $2 for a pepper plant right now at the nursery typically. Um, or we're starting a lot of extra seeds in the spring that we keep in our shop as a backup. So I've got backup rounds of peppers or tomatoes to go until I feel like we're safe on temperatures. So at this point, we're safe on temperatures and we're good. But um, a month ago, it was iffy and we had some that got stunted. So, <laughs> yes. I will definitely make a video. Make that drink the... and make a video. <laughs> yes, I will make that video. As soon as our cucumbers start producing, I will make that video. Well, we just planted them tomorrow, so it'll be a little bit. We planted them tomorrow in the yeah. future? <laughs> wow. <laughs> planted them yesterday. No, it was a couple days ago. Was now, it two days it ago? Was, it was uh, before, well, it was like in the middle of all the rain, but we got like a bunch of rain after. So We got cucumbers coming, Jennifer. We do. We'll make it. <laughs> Um, we don't, yes. So those do, those do, do turn to seeds. Yes. Yeah, so when, when plants bolt and flower, 
um, those flowers do eventually end up producing seeds. So like a radish, when it bolts, will produce a seed pod, kind of like a little pea pod. Um, like a regular does the same thing. Um, so that that's what's happening when it's bolting. Yeah, and a lot like cilantro, we just let it go. So that way we can uh, replant the cilantro itself and we don't have to do it. Yeah, so a uh, great idea here where if you have a plant that's like behind schedule, you can pause it. So you can say it's not going according to plan, basically. <laughs> like hold off on alerts. That's a good idea. Um, maybe the button is called adjust expectations. <laughs> <laughs> you always need to be adjusting. Stuff happened is yeah. the name of the button. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't yeah. that just how gardening is? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we hit one o'clock, so I think we are at the end of this live stream. I appreciate all of y'all joining us and we'll be back next week. So I hope y'all have a good weekend and we'll see y'all then. Yep. See y'all later. Bye everyone.